Hello everyone, welcome back to Bexhill West. Now hopefully you saw from the opening sequence that there's been quite a bit of progress here at Bexhill West, not least of which the fact the model has turned really quite green. Anyway, that's not really the focus of today's video. Now I did promise in last week's video that I would give a bit of an update this week. However, today I'm going to focus on the E1 project, the locomotive that I've been designing and my first failed 3D print. We'll talk about why it failed and some of the steps I've taken to remedy it and overcome that problem. But just to keep the regulars happy, I will put some footage at the end of the video of the model as it currently stands. Um, I've not set the whole thing up, so we don't have the station building itself set up on the end, but we will get into that more fully next week, I promise. Anyway, let's get into the video. Last week I showed my drawing for a 3D printed, um, let's call it the body, boiler and smoke box and cab for um, an E1 locomotive. And I discussed in that video how my plan was to 3D print the firebox, the cab and the smoke box and use a piece of brass tube for the boiler barrel. Once I'd uploaded that video I thought about it a bit more and I thought well I've done the, I've designed the thing, why not just send it to the printer and, and see what happens. And what I've got here is the outcome. And you can see it's got this very nasty sort of explosion effect uh, has occurred here. And so I thought we'd talk a little bit about that and maybe some design changes that I can make to this to see if we can improve it. So to give some context for what's going on here, this was printed um, in this fashion. So the build plate of the printer is sort of roughly where my hand is and the support was extended down um, to hold this thing as it printed. And this large gash that you can see running around each side of the boiler barrel, when I took it out of the printer it was a tiny little crack, a small fissure between two of the, um, the layers, the build layers. And that fissure, as this has cured, has opened up and grown somewhat. Now I think the reason it's grown is because it's very easy to expose the outside of this to the UV light to cure the resin, but the UV light's more difficult to get it inside and so I think what has happened is because we've got a larger surface area on the outside than the inside, that as this has cured it's shrunk ever so slightly and that shrinking effect has had sufficient force to rip the remainder of this layer apart. Now I must add that I, I took this print in to show some of the, the pupils at the school where I teach and this has been passed through a few hands and I'm quite certain it wasn't as destroyed as this when I gave it to them. But it's interesting, it shows the extent of the forces that are in, built up in this thing as it cures. Now additionally there are a couple of other defects which I hope the camera's going to pick up. This cab side has bowed outwards slightly. And again, I think that's differential curing from the UV light on this side to this side. Now I go to great lengths to cure this very slowly and I'm rotating it all the time. I'm doing my best to get the light in and try to cure it sort of evenly. But it's very difficult on a complicated shape like this. So it's got me thinking, are there modifications that could be made to this to, to try and minimise some of these effects. And so that's what we'll have a look at now. So what changes have I made to my drawing since we last saw it? Well, there have been a couple. So I've added a, a detail to the side, to the cab sides, just inside, uh, just to thicken this area up a little bit. Now my thinking here is that by the time the cab doors are on that you probably won't see that detail but it's just a little bit extra that I hope will help stop the sides of those um, cabs, the cab sides from, from curling. I've also added a strengthening rib around the underside of the roof which I hope will hold the roof in, um, in a, better, a better profile. My first attempt, which didn't have that, the, the cab roof sagged a little bit. Whilst I was at it, I added a little bit of detail to the back head. So we've got some, uh, some little bosses here that will represent the driver's combined um, steam and vacuum brake valves. 
and this big gland here will take the regulator lever and it's quite nice to get the, the little bolts on holding it on I don't know whether they're correct or not but it's interesting actually on the print they, they, they've come out and you can see them although I have to take a photograph and zoom in on the photograph to physically be able to see it they're too small to see with the eye I've also for this printed part I've added the saddle and this little extension for the piston valves um, I've, I've added that into the print just because I thought well why not but the main difference has been internally so if we take a cross section through our model and what I've done is basically whereas the boiler previously was a, a hollow tube I've just made it just filled it up basically just to stop um, if it should a split occur just just to so it, well just to make it stronger basically uh, but I've kept enough of a cavity in here to take the motor and allow the motor to to raise up slightly on its gearbox as I discussed in the last video so quite simple modifications um, but I hope that they produce a, a better outcome so let's see if they do so having effected those modifications to the design this was my mark ii print and this time instead of orientating the print at an angle i thought i would try doing it horizontally now in the machine this is the the, sort of the bed of the machine and it rises out of the resin tank like so and by and large the results are quite encouraging now I don't know how kind the camera is going to be here. Let's see if I can get it to focus a bit more accurately. Now I suspect that when I review this footage, this is going to be quite a cruel close-up. And if you look, you can definitely see um, lines on the surface. However, it is better than... Um, it's, it's actually the surface finish is better than it looks. And overall, I'm quite pleased with it. So if we have a look in the back of the cab, you can see the strengthening ribs that I've added here. Now there will be a, a little box here that, that takes the reversing gear. Um, so I'm not too worried about these things showing. And I've added this strengthening rib, which on the real locomotive is, a, is a, like an angle iron. And that's had the effect of holding the cab far better than the previous example. If we can look at the compare the the roof shape on this one it's kind of got distorted whereas on the mark ii version it's much better now you can also see in the back here i've just put a, suggested some back head detail i thought as this is still a prototype i won't go to town with that but just gives you an idea of of what's possible to achieve there now the other thing that i was really pleased with and i hope that we can get this on camera. I don't really have the, the right lens for showing you this, so let's hope this is going to work out okay. But the rivet detail around the smoke box all form beautifully, and I'm particularly impressed with the crispness of the, the moulding to the chimney. That's really good. Now, something I'm less impressed with is that when I prepared this Mark II drawing, I didn't have... Um, the specifications for the dome or rather the dome cover and so I've just drawn something that I thought looked roughly right um, it's not quite the right profile and if you look closely you'll see I haven't quite centered it between these two boiler bands it overlaps a little bit here but let's not worry about that just yet because I'll, re I'll change that I'll replace it anyway you can see that by and large this print has come out fairly okay my one gripe is that because I didn't want the rivet detail around the front of the smoke box to get too obliterated by these little nubs where the support attaches to the print, I removed a lot of the support from the smoke box. And as a consequence, during the printing process, the smoke box detached. And so the moulding of the smoke box or the printing of the smoke box hasn't come out all that well. And you can perhaps see the distortion if I show it to the camera this way round, it's really quite oval, not very good at all. Something else that was of interest to me on this one is we can again see what I think here 
is a similar delamination to the problem we had with the first one. And it's not as bad, but it's something I'd spotted and something to think about. And so we come on to prototype number three. Now this time, once again, I've printed this at an angle um, to the horizontal and it's printed really well. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I took some trouble to rethink the print support around the front of the smoke box. And fortunately, not too much of the detail has been obliterated. Now, I don't know if the, um, let's see if I can get this in view and get it to focus up upon the, uh, let's see if I can get it there, that might be slightly better. Um, the smoke box there, all the rivet detail has, has come out of tree. I'm really pleased with it. There's some, um, you may be able to see some sort of telegraphing of the um, print layers has, has come through. So I've got some angled lines on here, which, which look quite bad, I think. I think the camera's gonna make that look really quite nasty. In reality, it's not too bad at all. And I think that's coat of primer and careful rubbing down, that's, that's gonna take care of that, that will be fine. Overall, I'm pleased that for the most part, the problems I'd experienced previously have, have all been avoided. And I think we're in a good state now to move forward with this and I think it's gonna work a treat. Now, of course, the 3D printing process does leave these ugly marks where the support structure kind of attaches itself to the, the print that we need. However, this, this is um, water uh, washable resin and it goes off really hard and it does clean up really nicely. So with some, if I take some time and a little bit of care, these will all clean up and you'll see no, no witness of those once it's all been painted, It'll, it should look quite good. Now a mistake, fundamental mistake I made with this, and I'm kicking myself really looking at this now, was that when this comes out of the the printer, it gets it gets washed, the excess resin gets washed from the surface. There's always a sort of a film that clings to the, the surface of the print. And that washes away in water and it's quite easy. But whilst you're doing so, the resin is still relatively soft, and so I'll just tickle it away with a brush and make sure it's nice and clean. But for whatever reason, I don't know why, I didn't clean this side so well. And it would appear that that excess sort of resin that was clinging to the surface has not been washed away properly and has sort of destroyed some of the detail here a bit. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick this up, but it looks like it's had a bit of a bad paint job. And really that's my own fault for not taking care with the, um, with the washing process. However, it doesn't really matter. This is not the final version. And sometimes it's good to make a mistake because it reminds us of what we need to be doing to get things better in future. But for now, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. And so I've got my one, two, three prototypes there. And of course, I'll, these aren't wasted. I shall use these to practice the finishing processes and practice paint finishes and lining out and all, all of that sort of thing. I can practice on these before I do the final version. So there you go, that's the development of the E1 class locomotive today, and I hope that you would agree with me. It's, uh, it seems to be worthwhile. It's been, I think, two weeks since I did the unboxing video of the DJH kit, and the more I explore the 3D printing as a solution, the more I think this is definitely the way to go in terms of sort of getting a higher degree of sort of fidelity with the detail and stuff. I've probably spent less time drawing and printing this than I would have spent assembling the equivalent of white metal casting. And I'm not sure I'd ever get the casting up to this sort of standard. And, and of course, this isn't the finished standard. This is the next one should be hopefully even better. Anyway, I hope that was interesting.
So I hope you enjoyed that little look at the state of Bexhill West as it currently is. Now that footage was all shot with my phone quite quickly. Next week I promise you we'll, we'll look at it in a bit more depth and I'll talk you through some of the processes I've used to achieve the results that I've, I've currently got. I hope those of you who've been following the one project found my development work with the 3D printing useful. I've certainly got to a point now where I feel comfortable with progressing with that method of manufacturing. Now that project will now kind of take place sort of behind the scenes really and we'll revisit it on the channel. I think it'll be early in January uh, where hopefully I will have got the frames all prepared and we'll have the thing sat on some wheels and hopefully maybe even rolling about. That's all to come. Until then, thank you all for watching. Thank you to all the new subscribers and if you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It all helps the channel to get seen and you know, shown to a, a wider audience, which is helpful for me. So until next time, thanks for watching everyone. See you soon, cheerio.